Okay, welcome to part two, Avid MIDI Composer Da Vinci Resolve Round Trip. If you haven't seen part one, go watch it now. That's where we took proxy media out of Da Vinci Resolve, sent it over to Avid, we did an edit in Avid, and we created a list, sent that list back towards Da Vinci Resolve. Now in part two, we're gonna take that list and we're gonna relink it in Resolve to the original camera media files. Let's take a look. Okay, back in Resolve, I've made a bin called from Avid. Let's import our timeline. So we're gonna import AAF. And on this one, we're going to change only one thing. We're gonna change the, uh, we wanna to link to the source camera files. We don't wanna use the proxy, we wanna use the camera originals. Um, and I'm gonna not check another button here. First, we're just gonna do it this way. And we'll change the title to uh, offline. Now, we've got a couple of errors here. One of them is telling us that it cannot find the blur effect. And we knew we didn't have Sapphire in here. That was the whole reason we picked Sapphire. It's telling us it cannot find the color correction effect. And that's perfectly fine with us because we're in Resolve to use its color corrector. So we're not terribly concerned about that. And the timecode burn is not supported. Once again, we don't need the actual timecode burn track in Resolve. So what we now have is our edit from Avid flat uncolored, linking back to the camera originals. The time warp has come across. Uh, that did work and we'll just double check the settings on it and it is going in reverse. So that came across just fine. Nothing else that we have done has come across and that includes our resize at the end here. Now why didn't that come across? Let's go back to what we brought in and see what we got in our uh, import settings here. Let's just reconnect uh, this. We need the source camera. This button right here, use sizing information. That is stopping the resize effect from coming in. So let's bring this in one more time and this kind let's call it uh, with resize or something like that. Got those same three errors, but now if we uh, shoot down to our sizing uh, end, or our clip at the end with the sizing information on it, now we can see that it's got that sizing information. It's doing the uh, zoom in of 1.4%, and the pan is happening as well. So that is now coming across. So if you want the resize information from Avid to come across, you have to turn it on in your list create or in your list import tool. Uh, and then the last thing we need is our reference movie, so we'll bring that in and we'll put this on an upper track of our timeline. This is the only way we know that every edit in this timeline is correct. We're going to delete the uh, audio, the wave file that was originally used in the edit, and we're just going to use the mixed down audio from the reference movie. Again, if it's a more elaborate edit, sometimes it's nice just to have a rough edit that you're listening to rather than having to worry about 10 different channels of audio. We just have to change this to a stereo track instead of uh, mono tracks. And there is our uh, reference movie on track two and the actual edit on track one. But as the editor who did not, in theory, cut this piece, we still don't really know if every shot is correct. So we're gonna drop our opacity on the reference movie down to around 50%. And then we should just sit and watch the entire movie down. We're, by watching both layers at once, it's very easy to see if something is out of time. Uh, we didn't do any speed ramps, but those are usually an area that kind of, it's almost like a 50-50 gamble whether a speed ramp's gonna work or not. So you might have to rebuild those from scratch. Um, let's just see, we're coming up to our blur shot here, I think, pretty soon. 
Actually, I guess the reverse shot. No, no, there's the blur. Yeah. So the blur did not work. And we knew again, we knew it wasn't going to work. Now we have the option of in Resolve, we could build this blur ourselves. But the whole idea of this round trip is that it's going to end up back in Avid. And we know the blur effect was created in Avid, and we, so we know they have it. We can actually ignore the fact that the blur is not in Resolve. It will magically show up again when we go back to Avid. Here's uh, no, that's a normal shot. Here's our reverse shot here. That seems to work. We already saw that. And our resize, if we double check it against our reference movie, it is a perfect match. So that is really all we need the reference movie for. It has served its purpose. We can, uh, we can actually remove it from the timeline now. It has confirmed that our timelines match. Um, and I don't, if your show is five minutes long or five hours long, it's worth playing it down with a reference movie to make sure you've got everything correct. Next up, we're going to do a very quick and dirty color pass. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but we just want to make it uh, part of that workflow. So we'll be back after that's done. Okay, we're back. We have done a quick and dirty color pass. Every shot has some sort of color on it. We didn't spend six hours working on this. We just want to be able to send this back to Avid and see that the shots are colored for this workflow. So we're going to go over to the delivery page. And this is where we have to be a little more precise, specific with what we're going to do here. We have all these presets up top, including this one called Avid AAF. You have to press this button. It will call up some settings you can't just use these settings. You have to physically press this button because it's going to trigger an event during this workflow. Uh, so pressing this button brings up a file type, brings up a, a quality. We'll drop it where we could make it anything we want for as far as quality goes. We'll leave it at HQ. I'm going to turn the audio off because it's interesting to see what happens with that once we go back into Avid. And again, we're just using the reference movie audio anyway, so we don't, it's not like we need it. Uh, under advanced settings, we're going to make sure we're on video again. Uh, no burn in, but we're going to turn on handles. Uh, flat pass can stay off, but down here, handles. I'm going to set that set to 30. So that will allow the editor in Avid, when this footage comes back, he will have 30 frames at the beginning and the end of every shot, just in case the director says, hey, can you make that shot a little longer, a little shorter, whatever, fill in the gap with the next shot. This does give them a little bit of playing ability. Under File, we have unique file names with, pre with prefix. This is very important because uh, we do have a situation right here where we have two clips from the same source clip. Uh, one from the beginning, one from the end of that clip. Uh, you can see they're both called uh, C54 on both of these. If we don't have this unique file names turned on if we're, and we're doing individual clips, Resolve is going to overwrite the first instance of that rendered shot with the second instant of that shot because they both are called the same thing. I'm going to output all of this to a folder on my Avid Media Files MXF again and we'll call this one uh, color from Resolve. Uh, we better Danielle color from Resolve. So we will set that for our output folder. And uh, we'll add that to the render of the queue. We'll set that to render. And just as we're about to hit render, the phone rings, and it's the director. And he has a request. He wants us to to take the first and the second shots of this timeline 
and swap them. So instead of starting with the tray and going to the leaf, he wants to start with the leaf and go to the tray. So we say, okay. So we take number two and we move it over and we take number one, we move it over and we swap them around and we now have the first two shots different in resolve than what they were in the edit in Avid. That was his only request, so we'll go back to the delivery tab and we'll render out this timeline. Come back when it's done and take a look at the reverse shot. It's actually re rendering from the right part of the timeline to the left part of the timeline. So it is going to the end of the clip and it renders towards the left. So in essence, it's taking a reverse shot and playing it in reverse, which then puts it back into normal speed. It's a little hard to explain, but uh, you'll see in Avid why it did that. Render's done, we'll save the project and we'll save Resolve and we will go back to Avid. That blur effect is the perfect example of why you might want to go back to Avid at the end. If the house that's doing the editing has put a bunch of effects on it and you as the colorist don't have all those plugins, you might have to send it back to them to get them reapplied. Make a new bin. We're going to call this from Resolve. And we're left with the same dilemma we had at the start of all this. How do we get the media that Resolve output put into this MXF folder? How do we get that into Avid? It's actually pretty much the same process. We don't have a database right now because Resolve can't create a database. So we're going to rename this folder. And again, depending on your system and how it works, shared or not shared storage, I'm going to call mine POBPWIN dot some number, how about, I don't know, four, whatever. That causes Avid to do the indexing again. We can now go back and we can rename this back to from resolve or from resolve. I like keeping my folders organized when I go to archive or clean up or delete. I know where everything is and it's just a much easier clean workflow within Avid. So now we could just bring in that database again same as we did before, we can drag this database over and it certainly will bring in all of our color corrected clips that Resolve made, but that would mean we would have to rebuild the edit or go through a, another lengthy relink process within Avid, which we could do, but of course there's a much easier way to do this. So let's just remove these clips from the bin. What we want to do is bring in this, in this folder, there's one other item that was created. This was created from Resolve. It had nothing to do with Avid building a database. It was there when Resolve did its render. This is an AAF. This was created because we pressed that Avid AAF button inside of Resolve. That was the whole reason why you have to press that button. This tells Resolve you want a round trip AAF to be created. It'll create it in the same folder as the media. We can then go and just import that AAF into this bin. And then we get all of our media, all the clips with color on them. It brought in, or it's, the uh, it brought in the wave file, the original wave file again. It's actually referencing the original media that I had brought into Avid for that wave file, and it has also brought in a timeline. And the timeline is called what we called it in Avid originally. So let's just check that and see what we have here. Now, the show is all back together, but it now has the color on it from Resolve couple of things you'll note that are different. Our time code burn is magically back on the timeline. And that's interesting because it wasn't there in Resolve. 
how did it resolve? No, to put it back on if it didn't even know what that effect was in the first place. Well, resolve didn't. This is actually the exact same timeline that we spit out of Avid. The only thing it has to do with resolve is that resolve has told it to point to different media in the body of the timeline. Instead of the proxies or the camera originals, it's now pointing to the color corrected media that it created and placed in this folder. Other than that, there's no change at all on this timeline. And we can see that, um, actually even now, look down here at the bottom, our original wave file is here. In Resolve, we had deleted this and we had brought in audio from the reference movie. And we didn't even render audio when we spit out our footage from Resolve. So again, there are no changes from this timeline from the original Avid edit. There's nothing we can do in Resolve to actually change this timeline. And I'm going to prove that right here, because you remember the director asked us to swap these first two shots. Instead of starting with the tray and then going to the leaf, he wanted to start with the leaf and go to the paint tray. That is what we had built in Resolve. We rendered it out, spit out a list, but back in Avid, we are back to what we originally had cut in Avid. Changes you make in Resolve to the timeline are not reflected in the round trip workflow. Very important to remember that. In fact, we can see on the timeline that the, the original uh, or the renders out of Resolve aren't even on the timeline. They're not being referenced in this timeline. They were rendered out, but they didn't make their way into our bin here. Uh, and that's just because, again, the list is reflecting the original edit. Uh, so what we have to do is go into our Avid Media Files Color from Resolve folder, and I'm just going to drag this database over into my bin. That will add any of this media that's in the folder, but not in the bin. Uh, and there's those two shots have come in. Um, and at this point, you know, all you all you can really do at this point is manually edit these two shots back into your timeline as per the director's request. It's just one of those little idiosyncrasies with a workflow like this where any changes done in Resolve are going to have to be recreated in Avid. Um, it's just the way that it is. There is a benefit though. Here's the blur. The blur is here. The animation is still here. It is sitting here ready to go the way it always was. It's now just blurring a color corrected version of the shot. The reverse shot works because Resolve rendered this out backwards. So it was rendering it from here to here and basically made it into a regular forward speed shot, comes back into Avid, gets the reverse applied to it again, and we are now back to a reverse shot again. Seems weird, but it works. The color correction we added is still here. We don't need this anymore because we've done all the color in Resolve. Uh, so be aware, any, any of those types of effects, you're going to have to remove. If you've colored every single shot in offline, you're going to have to go through and remove them all. And while we're at it, we can remove the timecode burn window. We don't need that anymore. And then at the end, the resize and our, our animation effect is also, this is one item that did come in from Resolve. We saw that Resolve was showing the resize and the pan, um, but did it actually render it out? Let's just duplicate this clip and put it up on top. Uh, looks like it slided a slid a frame on me, so let's move that over. And let's remove this effect. And let's do a... Uh, do this is the color corrected version. And we know it's the color corrected version. We have V1027. That's the uh, add unique file names. It added the, the track name and a clip number to the head of every single shot. So this is what Resolve has spit out. If we were to go back into our proxy bin and find the original shot of this, see this is C64. It's right here. Uh, 
and we'll go actually find the actual frame that we used in proxy mode and you can see you know we've now got the table in the back or in the bottom of the screen so the zoom has definitely uh, occurred inside of resolve now it's a little weird that right now avid still has this effect on its timeline but it does not appear to be double zooming this clip i honestly I'm, I'm not sure why it's doing that it might be a bit of a bug somewhere because uh, honestly typically you would get a double zoom on this without deleting this effect so just make sure that um these types of effects you're going to have to go through and remove them from your timeline so there you go, a workflow between Avid and Resolve that's actually really easy to use as long as that proxy material was created correctly in the first place inside of Resolve. Make sure that time code is set correctly and make sure those real names are set up correctly. After that, you shouldn't really have any real issues. I hope you've learned something from this. And if you have, please leave me a comment and leave me a like. If you haven't learned anything, I guess you could leave me a dislike, but you know, that's up to you. Thanks for watching.